crazy. Um, <clears throat> so the video today, I'm going to talk to you guys. I feel like uh, I'm starting drunk history right now. Today I'm going to tell you the story of, um, I've been watching a lot of that. So um, <laughs> I'm going to talk to you guys today about buying versus renting, in particular in the Tampa market. Um, so there is an article that just came out uh, that was very interesting that took into consideration 40 main uh, counties in Florida, uh, main housing counties, and weighed renting, uh, the cost of renting versus the cost of buying. And Tampa came in as less expensive for uh, purchasing versus renting across the board. Um, I also want to highlight like during this study, it was, it was a 2% difference for Hillsborough County, Pasco and Pinellas were much more, it was like a 10% difference. Um, but they used a 5% interest rate, which is right now pretty, that's, that's very high. That'd be um, a lower credit score, like basically no money down, 100% financing type deal. Um, Cause all those things affect, it's not just your credit score that they look at, they look at your uh, debt to income, your how much cash you have on hand, your, your liquid equity. Um, they take into consideration a lot, it's not just your credit score. So 5% um, is high, and so taking into consideration the fact that it's more likely gonna be around 3.5 to 4%, depending on all of those factors, maybe even 4.2, 4.3, um, that 2% for Hillsborough County is going to look more like five or six, most likely. Um, I'm an economist, but based on the article that I read, the numbers that I did, that's what I came up with. Um, so I think that's something really important to take a look at. And a lot of people are, um, I even had someone today reach out and say that they're interested in purchasing, but they decided to um, sign another, sign a lease for another year because they didn't have 20% down. And a lot of people don't know that you can do conventional financing, which I'll talk about the difference between conventional and FHA in a different video. You can do conventional financing for as little as 3% down. And we can ask for the seller to cover your closing costs as well. Um, there's a lot, I always equate, uh, contracts to a puzzle. You're basically given a grid for a puzzle and based on that person's cash that they have on hand that they're willing to put towards this property, what the property needs as far as repairs and things of that sort, um, budget and timeline. Like, And when I say budget, I'm not just talking about cash to close. I'm talking about like, what do you want your monthly payment to be? Because even though you're approved for $300,000, doesn't mean that you necessarily are comfortable spending about $2,000 a month on your mortgage. Maybe you want to stay closer to that $1,500 range, which is going to be close to the 250. So like, let's make the fiscally responsible decision so that every day when you're pulling up to your house, you're not saying, oh my gosh, I can't afford this place. I can't travel. I can't go out to eat. I can't go to amusement parks. I can't do the things that really uh, make my life enjoyable. I spend all my money on this gosh dang house, which I am now learning to resent because I don't think I should have bought this expensive in the first place. That's an incredibly important thing to consider too. Um, so talk to your lender about not what's the max I'm pre-approved for, but based on this number that I want to spend per month, backtracking and like what kind of price range should I be looking at? So I think it's incredibly important, um, even before you are in the car with a realtor looking at houses or on Zillow, to talk to a lender to figure out that budget because I'm not in the game of breaking hearts. I'm not gonna show you a $300,000 home when really 250 is what you should be at because you're gonna fall in love with that $300,000 home. Um, so back to my original video, I was just a random tangent. Uh, it was renting versus buying in Tampa. Um, so the rental prices year over year from 2018 to 2019 went up, what was it? 10.6%. Holy cow, wow. You know, if, if, you, if your rental is $1,000, it's $1,100 now this year, 1160. That's a lot of money, you guys, you know, like, that's a difference of 14 point, $1,450 a year or something like that. It's the cost of a trip. That's the cost of, you could be saving that money for a uh, down payment or whatever, you, a kid. That's all that's on my mind right now, saving money for a child. Um, but that's a lot of money when you take into consideration. You could even take that money and invest it and get like a 4%, I don't know how to use that word. Whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> um, so that's something to consider, you know, like granted, yes, um, once you buy a house, that payment saves a thousand dollars a year. It's not going to be a thousand dollars forever because you have uh, taxes and insurance. Um, and those are going to waiver like your tax, your insurance is going to, I always recommend shopping insurance. We do it about once every year or two. 
kind of like the same time you do car insurance and bundling them together is also a wonderful option. But your insurance might go up, so that's going to affect how much you pay per month, but most importantly, your taxes as well, which is why it's so important to homestead the property. I talked about this in a previous video, um, because once you homestead the property, your taxes can only go up 3% a year. So that's how you see, uh, you say your parents have been in the same house for 30 years and their taxes are $800 a year. That's why, because taxes are based on the assessed value of the home, minus 50 grand once you uh, homestead it, and on that number, it can only go up 3% a year. So that's really important keeping, I don't know about you guys, but uh, Carrie and I are extremely budget and fiscally driven, and we make all of our decisions based on spreadsheets, uh, and sitting down and kind of talking about our goals and our um, long-term and short-term plan. And um, for us buying a house, that was, uh, we're also pretty controlling with our money. Um, that was a huge draw for us because I know I knew that if I know how much roughly I'm paying per month, you know, granted with some slight variation, I can plan, my five-year plans are gonna be a lot closer to what it's actually gonna look like versus if I'm renting because I don't have any control over that. Um, Bohemian Rhapsody is playing behind me and I love this song. Um, so yeah, so those are just kind of some things to think about, especially in the Tampa market. Um, most importantly, like I have people who reach out to me all the time and ask me for them if it would be cheaper uh, or less expensive to rent versus purchase. And I recommend my first uh, question to them is, have you talked to a lender? Because I can tell you rules of thumbs and my experience all day, every day, but I don't know your credit score. I don't know your debt to income ratio. I don't know those things. And so talk to a lender and get a prequal, you know, like, yes, your credit's gonna be pulled, but you're actually gonna make a uh, intelligent decision versus an emotionally driven decision. And especially for your first home, which is a huge investment, that argu arguably sets you up for your second home, your third home, your vacation home, everything like that. It's really important to make sure that you're making a smart decision. Um, and you have someone on your side who understands that and encourages that because, um, just because the house is cute and has like marble countertops doesn't mean it's necessarily the home for you and your goals. So, um, yeah, thanks for listening, you guys. I like doing these little educational videos. Um, I really like pouring into people and sharing my experience, um, my words of wisdom. I know lots of things about pugs and homes. So let me know if you got any questions.